everybody, and welcome back to another Wheel of Time video. It's been a minute, but we finally have some major, major news to talk about in regards to the upcoming Wheel of Time television adaptation in production by Amazon Studios. There is some massive casting news, as well as some other small tidbits of info about the show that we're going to get into in this episode. I will not only be announcing the casting choices, but also giving my analysis on the picks, and also talking about some speculation as to what the announcement for these specific casting choices might mean for the show going forward and what we can expect. Additionally, at the end of the video, I'll have a major announcement concerning thegreatblight.com, the new community website for the Wheel of Time that we've been building. So we've got a lot to get to, I'm excited. Let's first go ahead and mention the video's sponsor, NordVPN. This is a service that I use and I am super excited to have them as a sponsor on the channel. They offer a service that I think is absolutely vital to anyone that uses the internet regularly. Stay tuned for later in the video. I'll tell you a bit more about what they do and why it's so important and a very special offer for all of my viewers. Let's go ahead and hit a spoiler warning for the video as well. Today's video will carry a spoiler rating of red, but only through The Great Hunt and New Spring. If you haven't finished the second book of the Wheel of Time series, as well as the prequel novel for New Spring, please watch this video at your own risk. We are going to spoil some stuff. You have been warned. So before getting to the major news, specifically the casting, let's hit on some of the more minor news or information concerning the show. First off, let's start with Barney Harris. For those of you that are unaware, Barney Harris has been cast to play the role of Matt Cawthon on the show. Now, up until about the past month or so, there was speculation by some fans that Matt had a diminished role in the show simply because we haven't heard much from Barney at all since his casting. He has social media accounts, but he was essentially silent on all of them, and he really didn't engage with fans at all. Well, that all changed a couple weeks back. Barney has become, without a doubt, the most active member of the Wheel of Time production on social media. Now, I know this isn't show news, because he hasn't really been tweeting or posting about the show in particular, but Barney has been giving us glimpses into his own life, his opinions, and he has a lot of them. It's been fairly entertaining to follow him, and it seems like he's enjoying himself quite a bit. Now, we can hope as filming resumes that his activity will remain the same, and we'll get some show news from him as well. Now, speaking of the show filming resuming, we have yet another indication that the show is about to restart its filming immediately, in that Marcus Rutherford, the actor playing Perrin, tweeted out the following tweet showing us what appears to be his flights between the UK and Prague. Given that the show is filmed in Prague, this is a fairly good indication that he is at least headed back there to film more scenes. Now, one last piece of the more minor news, David Buckley, previously announced to be the composer working on the Wheel of Time score, had an interview with Film Music Magazine about some of his latest work. He recently completed work on two movies that are considered major motion pictures. His latest projects are Unhinged, starring Russell Crowe, and Greenland, starring Gerard Butler. Now, in the interview, he talks quite a bit about his style and writing process, which I found pretty interesting. I'll have the complete article and interview linked in the description of the video if you'd like to take a look at yourself. But during the interview, he was asked about his current projects, and he stated that he had just begun writing for a new project called Wheel of Time. Now, he said that stylistically, this was going to be different from any of his other projects that he had mentioned, and it was going to require instruments to be recorded live, separately, and then edited together. He implied that he was not far into his writing process for the entire score, and that right now he was just writing themes. Now, it occurred to me while I was reading the article that most people are not familiar with how a film or television show is scored, and again, the score being the music. I want to explain in a very general way how it's done so you can have a feel for how far they are from completion. How a movie or show is scored by a composer can vary from project to project, but the basic parts are fairly similar. The first stage in the composing process is what is called spotting. Spotting is the process by which the composer watches either a completed version of the movie or show, or a partially completed version, and begins to see how the score needs to flow for each scene, as well as various cues like visual ones or sound cues that the music needs to change uh, or the tempo needs to change. Now, some composers are present for all of the filming, and so they'll be on set, so they're going to have a firm grasp of that process, but that's actually very rare. Most spotting is done after the completion of the filming or near the end of the filming. Now, it appears David Buckley will not, or at least has not done his, his spotting in person, as he was working on other projects at the time. So it looks like his spotting will have been done by looking at almost completed versions of the show. After the spotting has been completed and there are precise timings for each cue necessary in the story for the music, the composer begins writing the score. This process can take from weeks to months, and, and really that's dependent on the size of the project 
and its complexity. After the completion of the writing portion, then comes orchestration where it's written for each instrument to create the desired sound as a whole. Finally, the music is recorded and edited into the movie or television show. Obviously, that's a very bare bones process that's actually way more complex in reality, but it gives us some insight into where Wheel of Time production is currently in regards to its score. It seems that enough of the show has been shot, or edited at least, that David Buckley can begin the writing phase to put together various themes for the show. Themes could be like Rand's theme or the Emmons Field theme. You hear these things, uh, these particular themes, for various shots. So if a scene has Rand in it, we might hear Rand's theme. A good example for this, the, if you're not familiar with the idea of themes, is the Star Wars franchise. The Imperial March is one of the most recognizable musical themes of all time. Whether you've seen Star Wars or not, you will recognize it. And it plays when you see Darth Vader on screen, or if you're about to see Darth Vader on screen. Now Luke Skywalker has his own theme as well. These themes are present throughout the movies. So one other thing of note here is the fact that David Buckley seems to know that each instrument is going to need to be recorded separately. That could be because of COVID, or it could be because he has an idea in his head about how he wants this to sound. My takeaway from all of this though is that the shoots that they're headed back to Prague to finish right now are simply really just to finish some of the filming. Most of the post-production work, in my opinion, for the stuff that's already been recorded, sounds like it has been completed, or it's nearing completion to the point where David Buckley can start to score that work. Typically, he can't do that if that other stuff isn't finished. So, here's the positive from all of this. This gives me hope that we are certainly going to see a 2021 released, despite COVID, and it's possible that it could be as early as spring of 2021 or early summer of 2021. Again, these are my guesses, but that timing seems to line up and it has me kind of excited. Now, before we hit the major casting news, let me tell you a bit about NordVPN, this video sponsor. This is a sponsorship I've coveted for a while and I'm very excited to have. NordVPN is the best known and best provider of VPN services out there. A VPN is an absolutely necessary service if you use the internet in any capacity, or if you do any form of online banking, if you have personal information that you enter on your computer or on your smartphone. Many of you may have no clue what a VPN is or why in the world you should have it. So let me give you the Cliffs Notes. Did you know that if you live in Europe or in the United States that your internet service provider tracks every single thing you do online and logs it? Every single website you visit, every single video you watch, and everything you do. Additionally, major tech companies also monitor this information as well as some bad guys. If you are on any form of public Wi-Fi or public broadband or you're at work using the internet there, your passwords can be stolen, your keystrokes logged, and your privacy breached. This goes for your computer and your smartphone. Now what a VPN does is it protects you from all of this by encrypting your activity and using the internet through a secure server. This prevents everything I've listed up above. Now NordVPN is also based in Costa Rica as well, so there is no logging of any websites that you visit while using the VPN at all. Your browsing is completely safe. One other major benefit, if you don't care about the privacy stuff, is that if you live in another country and you want to watch American Netflix, for instance, there's a show on there that you want to see and you can't see it in your country, you can use a VPN to use the internet from an American server and watch those shows. You could do the same thing from anywhere on the planet. If you're in America and you want to watch something on Australian Netflix, same idea. So you're convinced you should get a VPN? Good. You really should have one if you're on the internet. Now here's the cool part. Nord is giving my viewers a very special deal. You're going to get 68% off their two-year plan, which gives you a VPN for basically a couple bucks a month, literally. Click the link in the description below and learn more about why you need a VPN and how you can get this great deal. And just by signing up for something that we should all have anyway, you really help support the channel. Again, click the link in the description, and now back to the video. So let's hit the major casting news. We finally got some confirmations on characters that we knew were rumored to be in the show and some casting on characters that the entire fan base has been clamoring for for months now. Let's kick it off with the confirmations of two castings that had been rumored before that we now know with certainty. We have Claire Perkins being cast as Kareen Nagashi and Peter Franzen as her warder Steppen. Claire Perkins is an accomplished British actress with a long history of work on British television shows, most notably EastEnders. 
Peter Franzen is one of the more accomplished Finnish-born actors of all time. He's appeared in over 50 films and television shows. His latest project that has him known all over the world is his role as King Harold Feinherr from Vikings. They are both extremely qualified and award-winning actors, so they seem kind of overly qualified for these small roles. And why, why do I say they seem overly qualified? Well, I talked about this in a news video way back when we first got these rumors, but it's worth mentioning here again. This is an odd casting choice, not for the actors chosen, but for the characters. Kareen Nagashi is a powerful Aes Sedai. In fact, the most powerful Aes Sedai in the tower at the time that she's in the story, as well as being the Captain General of the Green Aja. So what's the problem? Well, she's only present in New Spring, and we don't get a POV character from her there. And she's one of the Aes Sedai sent after to, to find the Dragon Reborn as a baby, but she's killed by the Black Aja off page, and that's the last we hear from her. So it's a very small role in the shortest book in a prequel. And then the fact that her warder would be cast by as Peter Franzen, one of the most famous actors in Finnish history, is a little odd. So the fact that Kareen and her warder are such small characters in the story and show up in a prequel rather than the main sequence adds some mystery behind this casting. Are they really casting two high-profile actors in roles that amount to no more than a cameo? That seems a stretch, so it leads me to believe that these roles are going to be expanded in some way. Whether that's through extensive flashbacks or using the character of Kareen Nagashi in the present day, it seems likely that she will be a character that's expanded upon in the show. My guess is that we will see extensive flashbacks rather than having her be a part of the story in the present. I'm going to get into this a bit more later in the video when I tie all these casting choices together. Uh, so I'll tell you a little bit more about what I'm thinking there. Let's go ahead and move on to the next casting announcements. We got the announcement that Sophie Akaneda will be playing Swan Sanche. I can't stress what a big hire this is. First of all, I've been waiting for Swan's casting for a while, and I love, love, love this casting. For one, she is an extremely good actress. For those of you who have not heard of Sophie before... Let me go ahead and list off some of her awards. She's been nominated for an Oscar for her work in Hotel Rwanda as the Best Supporting Actress. She's been nominated for multiple BAFTA TV awards, nominated for Golden Globe Awards for Best Actress. She has won and been nominated for multiple NAACP Image Awards. She's been nominated for multiple Screen Actors Guild Awards. She's won a Tony for her work in A Raisin in the Sun. And on top of all of that, she has been appointed an officer of the Order of the British Empire and a commander of the Order of the British Empire for her acting work. When Rafe said they were going to go after really good actors and actresses for this show, he was not kidding. How many television shows have two Oscar-nominated actresses playing supporting roles in their show? I'll give you a minute. Right. I've included an interview in the, from the BBC with a clip of her work as well as her talking about some of her roles. I found it pretty interesting. I'll have it linked in the description of this video. Now, I'm going to talk more about the casting of Swan and what that might mean here in a moment. So let's go ahead and move on to the next big casting announcement. Kai Alexander has been cast in the role of Min Farshaw. Now, I know for many there was quite a bit of a worry that they would be cutting Min from the show as we hadn't heard much about her at all. I'm excited for the pick here. Kai Alexander is a half-Japanese and half-Chinese actress that's known for her roles in Fleabag, Maleficent, and most notably playing Leaf in Game of Thrones. Now, I've linked a video to her work in Game of Thrones down below if you didn't see it. She's a great actress, and I'm excited to see her play men. But let's take these casting choices in summary and talk about what they might mean for the show. Now, I thought we might not actually get men in Season 1, and let me explain why. This is the same reason that I think that we might not get the Tracans in Season 1. But if we're going to get men, I think we're going to get them now. If they are going to need to lock down some of these actors and actresses for years under contract, paying them for one season for what works out to only be a cameo just does not make financial sense. Men, like Elaine, is one of those characters. So, again, Min shows up in a couple chapters in the first book. It would make no sense to bring her in for basically what uh, amounts to one scene. So the fact that we have Min cast leads me to believe that Min is going to see more than that cameo role. Well, how might that happen? One way would be for men to make an appearance and then travel with the party rather than disappearing. So, for instance, men could leave with them when they're in Berlon and just travel with them, and that would expand upon her role. Now, I don't think that would completely damage the story if that happened, uh, and it would give men more of a chance to bond with you-know-who. But another way that this could work out would involve the other two castings that I talked about, 
and a lot fewer changes to the story. Now, many have predicted that based on the episode titles that season one of the show would encompass book one and parts of book two from the Wheel of Time. Now, if the Great Hunt is included and Min is in the White Tower when the party of Aes Sedai arrive in Tarvalin, that would justify her inclusion in season one of the show. Additionally, now that we have a Swan Sanche, as well as an unconfirmed casting of a young Swan Sanche, this seems to add credence to the idea that we're going to see some flashbacks. I think that an episode of the season, possibly the Flame of Tarvalin, We'll see a time jump backwards to show us a young swan, a young Moraine, the start of their quest, and some of the events of New Spring, hence Kareen Nagashi's involvement. These flashbacks could last one episode, or they could span multiple episodes, but it would seem based on the casting that these things would make sense within the flow of the story. For those of you worried that they can't do this all in one season, I'd invite you to take a look back at a video I made months ago breaking down how the Eye of the World would actually fit into four episodes. Now, I did that as a proof of concept, not to say how I would adapt it, but it did work out. Now, I don't think we're going to get all of book two, but I do think there will be enough there to set up the Shan Chan and the hunt for the horn in season two, as well as the backstory of Moraine and Swan's quest being fully established in season one, which is what we'll see next year. So what do you all think of the casting? What do you think it means for the first season of the show? Please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to have some discussion about this. Additionally, consider joining the Discord server if you want to talk more about the Wheel of Time with us. It's a lively community there. We have a lot of fun. The link for the Discord is in the description of the video as well. Make sure to check out NordVPN and get yourself protected. That link is below as well. And now to the big announcement that I mentioned. I will be releasing a video here in the next few days that will be officially launching the beta version of thegreatblight.com. The site will be launching with most features active, but work on the site is going to continue, specifically the wiki. That, that's all going to be ongoing. There are going to be a lot of cool features at launch, though, and I'll be releasing a video that will walk you through all of that, uh, release it all to the public, and it's going to set up a cool contest. Look for that video soon. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to be updated when I release a new video. Subscribing to the channel really helps us grow and it gets more exposure in YouTube. If you enjoy the content, you watch my stuff all the time and you're not subscribed yet, please hit the subscribe button. I'd appreciate it so much. Also check out the Patreon if you want to support the channel. It really is the best way to support the channel going forward and the website going forward. And you can sponsor a video topic there. We have a new chosen tier member this week, and he's going to be getting his very own sponsored video in the very near future. Check out the Patreon to see how you can do the same. Again, guys, thanks for watching. Until next time, peace out. Tinker in the kitchen with a job of work to do. Mistress up above, slipping on a robe of blue. She prances down the staircase, a fancy us a free. Crying, Tinker, oh dear Tinker, won't you mend a pot for me?